What is the middle way? We hear a lot about the middle way in Buddhism. And what is it? Well, there's two times, at least two kinds of middle way, actually. And one of them is the middle way between, which was the first one that Buddha mentioned after his enlightenment. And he said, when I was a prince, I was very self-indulgent and the world was very indulgent with me and I had experienced every pleasure and everyone catered to me, my ego and what I wanted and etc. So I was very, very overindulged in sensory pleasure. And then when I became an ascetic and a seeker, I got into the opposite and I decided my body was the problem and I was going to mortify it to the absolute. I was going to seek whatever you could find and that was enlightening about pain. I was inflicting pain, I was damaging myself, and I was extremely self-mortifying and overly ascetical. So my first middle way was a middle way where I restrained myself from excessive sensory indulgence, and I also restrained any tendency to sort of self-punish or self-mortify. And so the middle way was I live in a pleasant way of being, but I refrain from being indulged in that and I therefore spend my focus on trying to find out my nature and find out reality and educate myself ethically, psychologically and scientifically. And uh, that's the middle way, that's the first middle way. Then the second middle way is the middle way that uh, is unpacked in the Transcendent Wisdom Sutras by the Buddha and a little bit more inchoately or hintingly, even in the Theravada suttas, the Pali suttas, he was always into the middle way there. And that is the middle way between absolutism, sometimes, or eternalism, as they sometimes call it, when you focus on the impermanence-permanence duality, uh, and nihilism, or where you think that, well, it's not absolute, then it doesn't exist at all. And those are two extremes of worldview, that there's an absolute, like absolute the absolutist theism, absolutist self-centrism. There's all kinds of ways of perceiving things, something as absolute. And then the opposite is seeing it as really nothing. It just all dissolves into nothing. It's all nothing. And that's nihil, and there's no consequence. And, there's, and that's nihilism. And the, there the middle way is between absolutism and nihilism. And as I said, in another one of my answers, we could call it a good kind of relativism. So it's where things are relational and there are some strong rules and relative absolutes within the relativity, but they are never absolutely absolute. And there's no nothing, also everything is relative and nothing is the, is the one thing that is not there. So it's, 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 there is no nothingness, in other words, there's a, there's a, except as a concept. And uh, you can create a state that might seem to you like your preconception of nothingness, but it would just be in a way you're experiencing your own concept, really, basically. You're creating a space in your mind that seems to fit your concept, reifying as something. So, um, so that's called a middle way. 